Hey there, on this one I thought we would do a very simple Ruth Array problem. So it says we're going to determine the stability using the Ruth Array method and this would be our polynomial at the bottom of our transfer function. Alright, so, so you've gone through, you've gotten your transfer function, this would be the denominator and we want to figure out if it's stable or unstable. So let's use Ruth Array to do that. Now first thing we want to do is construct the array, the table. All right, so we have s to the fifth power. So we're going to start here and then we're going to go all the way down and we're going to decrease that exponent by one until we get to zero. All right, so we got six rows there. Let's put a line. And then now we're going to go through and fill out the top two rows of the array using our polynomial. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off on this top row and to get the coefficients for that, I'm just going to use the coefficients of um, these terms in the polynomial. So we're going to start out with the coefficient of s to the fifth. So that's one, right? And then we're going to go every other one. So now we're going to go to five. And then we're going to go to one. And then that's all we're going to have for that top row. Okay, so it's every other one. And then we go to the next row. All right, so the next row, we start off with the three. All right, so we're gonna put a three here, and then we go every other one for this. So we got three, four, and then three again. Okay, so we got our top two rows. Now we're done with this polynomial. We've gotten all the information we can out of that. So we're through using that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these values to um, construct the rest of the array. Okay, so let's go to this term right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to basically form a determinant here and we're gonna multiply it by negative one over three. Okay, so uh, let's go over where the negative came from. First of all, that's just from the equation for the Ruth array. It's always gonna be negative here, this coefficient out front. The three is coming from right here. Okay, so first element of this row above where we're working. And then the determinant is gonna be this little two by two, that's right here. So we got one, five, three, and four. Okay, so now we go through, do the math, All right? So we got the negative one third, and then we're gonna have four minus 15, right? So one times four minus the three times the five. And then we get that. Okay, so that's going to end up being negative um, one-third times negative 11, so that will be 11 over 3. And then that will go right here, third row, first element. Okay, now we're going to keep working our way this way across this row until we run out of information from the top two rows. Okay, so let's go here. So now for this one, we're going to have our coefficient out in the front again. So negative one-third, same thing we had above, right? So the denominator on this coefficient will always be the first element of the row above where we're working, and we're always going to have this negative sign. Now our determinant is going to be a little different now. We're going to keep this first column the same. So we get one three, and then we're going to go to the next column. Right, so this last column here. I shouldn't say it's the next column because it's column three. Okay, so we already used the five, four here, so now we want to use the one, three on this one. Okay. Now if we look here, we got negative one third, and then we're going to have one times three, which is three, minus one times three, that's three, so that's going to be zero. All right, so then we just put the zero right there. And that's all the information we can get for this row because we don't have any more data over here. All right, so now let's go to the next row. So these were for s cubed, now let's do s squared. So same procedure except for now we're going to use these two rows. Okay, so let's get our coefficient first. So it's going to be negative one and then we're going to put it over the first element of the row above where we're working. So that's going to be the 11 over 3. Alright, and then our determinant is going to be this little 2 by 2 right here. Alright, so 3 fourth and then 1 or 11 over 3 and 0. 
So let's go through. We got negative 1 over 11 over 3, so that becomes negative 3 over 11. And then do the determinant. 3 times 0, that's 0, minus 4 times 11 over 3. So it'll be minus 44 over 3. Do the math there. Uh, the 3's will cancel, negatives cancel. We get 44 over 11, so we get positive 4. And then that goes right here. Okay. So now let's see if we can uh, get anything else here. We still have this 3 right here, right? We haven't used that yet. Now, this is blank. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in a 0 here. All right, so for this next element in this row, we're going to have negative 1 over 11 over 3. I have no idea why I drew pi there. It should be 11. <laughs> and then our determinant, we're still going to use the 3 and the 11 over 3. That doesn't change. And then now we're going to go this last column. So 3 and then 0. So plug in a 0 where we have the blank. Okay. So again, that gives us negative 3 over 11. And then we're going to have 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 3 times 11 over 3, which gives us the 11 right there. All right, so now what do we get? Well. We got uh, 0 here, and then this is negative 11 over 11. That is cancel. Negatives cancel, so we get a 3. Okay. And then we just keep on going. So both of these were for s squared, that row. Now we're on this row. Same procedure. Get our coefficient first. So we look to the row above. It's going to be negative 1 over 4. And then our determinant will be this one right here. All right, so that's what we'll put in here in the brackets. So 11 over 3, 4, and then 0 and 3. So do that calculation, you get negative 1 fourth. 11 over 3 times 3 gives you 11. I don't know why I put r, let me need parentheses here. So we'll have 11 and then minus 0. All right, so that gives us negative. 11 over 4. And that would go right here. Now, is there any way to get this element here? No, right? Because we don't have any more data over here. I've already used the 0 and the 3. There's nothing else here. So that's all we're going to have in that row. And then let's do uh, the last row here. Now, what do y'all think the coefficient should be? going to be negative 1 over first element of the row above. So put the negative 11 over 4 in the denominator, and then our determinant that we're going to use is going to be this little 2 by 2 right here. Now, this is blank, so we're just going to plug in a 0. All right, so we got 4, um, negative 11 over 4, 3, and then 0. And then let's go through and solve here. So the negatives cancel out. We end up with 4 over 11 times um, 4 times 0, which is 0, minus 3 times negative 11 over 4. So what would that be? Uh, negative 33 over 4, right? Negatives go to positive. The 4s cancel. We get 33 over 11, so that's 3. Okay, and that's the end of our table, right? So we've con constructed our Ruth array, and now we can go ahead and look at stability. Before we do that, though, I want to point out something. There's a pattern here. If y'all notice, all of these are 3, right? So if we look at this, um, this last element on the second row equals you know, the last element on every other row. Okay, and you'll always notice that pattern. So if you do any of these arrays, you're going to notice that. All right, so, so just remember, the last element on those even rows there is going to be the same value. Okay? So that's a neat little thing you can use. It saves you some time, because then you don't have to go through and calculate these determinants.
All right. So looking at that, let's go ahead and let's determine stability. Now, the way we determine stability with the Ruth array is we're going to focus in on this first column. So at this point, I don't care about this stuff over here. Second and third column, I don't care about. We just care about this first column. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for sign changes. Okay. So we're going to start at the top and then go down and count sign changes. And I'll use this little orange uh, marker to mark these out. So this is positive, right? Positive one. Then we got positive three. No sign change there because they're both positive. Then we go positive three to positive 11 over three. No sign change there. Then positive 11 over three, positive four, no sign change. But now we have positive four to negative 11 over four. That is a sign change right there. So let's put a little check there. Next, we go negative 11 over four to positive three. Is that a sign change? Yes, it is, right? So let's put a sign change there, a little check mark. Okay, so we have two sign changes. Okay, so anytime when we have just a standard Ruth array like this, um, if we have any sign changes, the number of sign changes will be the number of roots on the right side. Okay, so that means we've got two uh, roots on the right side. Or you could say two poles, um, however you want to denote it. So I always just put RHS for right hand side. Now, this is a fifth order polynomial, so we have a total of five roots. All right, so the total number of roots is five. I've got two on the right hand side, so that means I've got to have three on the left hand side. Okay, now I don't know where they are on the on the axis, right? I just know I have two on the right hand side, three on the left hand side. If we have any roots at all on the right hand side, we have an unstable system. All right, so this is unstable because we have roots on the right hand side. All right, so this is typically um, what you'll be asked to find. So how many roots, you know, where do they lie? Right hand side, left hand side. And is it stable or unstable? This would be unstable. All right, now there are cases where you have roots on the imaginary axis, but um, that is a special case of the Ruth array. So that would be covered in a different example. Um, so there you go, there's actually two um, special cases for Ruth array. All right, so if you want those kind of examples, we'll have to have to look at another problem. But for this one, where we don't have any zeros on this first column, this is what we do. Just look for the sign changes. All right, hopefully that explained um, very quickly how to do just a basic Ruth Array problem. All right, I'll see y'all next time for another example.